Manchester United getting a victory at Fulham potentially saving Eric Ten Hag's job uh, Bruno Fernandes with that goal very very late on but the overall performance was poor again wasn't it and and if I were a Man United fan although I'd be delighted with the three points I certainly wouldn't be getting carried away by that performance no absolutely not I think it's a very definition of paper and over the cracks isn't it yeah. it was it was a a good win an important win vital in fact and a goal scored by whatever you think of him he's one of their best players if not their best player like Bruno Fernandes pops up when it most matters to, yeah, as you say, potentially save Eric Ten Hag's job. However, we've seen these victories for Manchester United before and I don't think it really changes anything. We've seen them beat Brentford in the last couple of minutes. We've seen them beat Copenhagen and ultimately nothing has changed. There is an endemic problem at the club and I think Eric Ten Hag is making some terrible, terrible decisions. So, yes, Manchester United beat Fulham as well they should. You know, Fulham can't score a goal. They went out in the summer and they recruited Raul Jimenez, a man that was struggling to score goals anyway. They lost Mitrovic. They're all over the place. You know, the club is quite an unhappy club at the moment. So Manchester United beating Fulham, as much as it's it's important, it's not the symbolic victory that it's being painted as at all. I think they're, I think they're still in trouble, and we haven't learned anything about Manchester United. Nothing new anyway. Nothing has changed. Whatever you thought about who they were before that game, it's who they are today. Yeah, totally agree. And, and I agree with you on some of Ten Hag's decisions. You know, you bring... Uh, Sofian Amrabat in as this defensive midfield dynamo, you mm. know, the one that's going to turn your season around. Casemiro's out and he still doesn't get in the team. No, no. Mason Mount, you pay 60 plus million for him and he can't get in the team. Rafael Varane um, is overlooked in favour of Harry Maguire, who Manchester United were trying to ship out in the summer. Just, there's so many decisions that he's making that just yeah, don't make I mean, sense. And, and the, you know how you just rattled them off there? You're, you're totally right. But I mean, I, I could do that as well. I could mm. add to that list. They they were desperate for a goal in the Manchester derby and they took off Hoyland. Fairly recently, they were desperate for a goal and the managerial genius put Harry Maguire up front. Fairly recently, they were they were in need of a revamp in midfield and they brought on Donny van der Beek, a player that Eric Ten Hag himself had decided wasn't good enough to be in their European Cup squad. Do you see how many there are? Yeah. Do you see how, how problematic the club is? And I think that... The, the general consensus, I think, of of sort of people who discuss football is that Eric Ten Hag is a good manager who did really well last year and is making a pig's ear of it now. But I'm not hearing enough of the last part of that sentence. I think people will focus on maybe the players not being good enough, and there are a lot of players that aren't good enough. Johnny Evans shouldn't be the answer. Victor Lindelof should be nowhere near that team. Harry Maguire has been done to death. But people focus on that and they focus on the Glazers and they focus on the takeover and they focus on Sir Jim Ratcliffe and they focus on the Qataris and they focus on everything apart from Eric Ten Hag's glaring mistakes in that Manchester United hot seat. Well, he might have made another mistake in the way that he's handled the Marcus Rashford situation. Now, Marcus Rashford went out after the Manchester derby. It was his birthday, apparently. He went out clubbing. And that has drawn criticism from all angles on Marcus Rashford. Then at the weekend, he's not involved in the game. Manchester United and Eric Ten Hag say that he was out injured. But I think there are a lot of people out there that are not necessarily buying that. As a result of that... Uh, the United Stand, a very prominent Manchester United YouTube channel, uh, put out a thumbnail for an upcoming video earlier today that said Marcus Rashford's future. It was a, a, with a question mark. They were questioning whether or not he'll be at the club. To which Marcus Rashford responded on social media by saying, can you stop spreading these malicious lies? What's that all about? And what does that tell you about A, Marcus Rashford's headspace mm. and B, you know the situation that's currently ongoing behind the scenes at United. I mean, I, th I, th I think it's I think it's a mess. The first thing that I have to do with regard to this issue that we're discussing here, you know, Mark Goldbridge versus Marcus Rashford, effectively, is highlight. Firstly, I haven't seen the video, so I've seen the thumbnail and I've seen the reply. I haven't yet had a chance to see the video, but what I would say is again, actually, in, just in terms of being as open and transparent as possible here, Mark isn't my mate. Like we we've met. But we aren't friends, so I have no tribal loyalty to him. I can just give my opinion on this, and it isn't at all biased. I think Marcus Rashford taking umbrage at fair comment criticism, fair comment journalism, and that is what Mark Goldbridge is. People won't like to admit that, and I'm sure that that will ruffle a few feathers in terms of the old boys club of actual journos. But Mark Goldbridge has a platform... Uh, he provides comment on Manchester United and he does it to a level that is basically beyond anyone could even dream. His his cachet within the industry is unbelievable. So Mark has a right to question Mark Rashford. He is allowed to present his opinion 
with fair comment and question whether Marcus Rashford, whether his future lies at the club. Marcus Rashford has absolutely no right to take umbrage at that. He has the right to reply. He has a right to say what he said. But he can't be offended that comment has been passed on his ludicrously poor performances this this season. Is and if fair? anything, if anything, the fact that Marcus Rashford responded to that tweet or X, mm. whatever you call them nowadays, it's only added more to the to the yeah. fire. It's only added more fuel because more people are going to come across that post now than totally. they would have done before. Now they've got a huge reach and lots of people would have seen it anyway. But this only increases the yeah. reach, right? I, it's, of this it's, post. it's absolutely true. It's I mean it's the Barbara Streisand effect. Barbara Streisand wanted to to make sure that certain photographs weren't seen. And in order to do that, the the photographs didn't gain massive popularity anyway. But in order for her to to try and squash these these photographs going going viral on the internet, she, all she did was lend a load of oxygen, pump a load of oxygen into them, and now everybody's seen them. So it's the Streisand effect. Mark Rashford has made it's a talking point. You and I wouldn't be discussing Mark Goldbridge, his YouTube channel, his opinions on the matter, and Mark Rashford's response to the matter if it wasn't for Marcus Rashford going out of his way to give this some sort of credibility. Simply by replying, you are lending it credibility. And I don't, I don't really understand why anybody that thinks Mark has done anything wrong, I, I don't get. Like, do, do you know, do you know what it reminds me of a little bit? In, in the past, I've been fairly critical of Harry Maguire. And sometimes when I have been, I think his performances have been woeful. I think it's a myth that he has never let England down. I think it's weird the way that he's conducted himself. I, I went quite harsh on him. Do you remember when he scored that goal against Albania and he stuck his fingers in his ears, cancelling out the haters like he's Kim Kardashian? <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't like it, I didn't rate it, and I went public on those opinions. People would constantly reply to me and go, you shouldn't, you shouldn't say that. W what about his mental health, for example? No, hang on a minute. I... I in my role as a modern day, I don't see myself as a journalist, but I have a platform where I talk about football in the public. I have a right to present my opinion and fair comment. I believe that is fair comment. Mark analysing Rashford and his performances, that are woeful, by the way. Like, Mark Rashford spending time on, on Twitter, replying to Mark, surely his time could be better spent. And then it brings us on to the, the conversation around his, his birthday celebrations. By no means do I think Marcus, Marcus Rashford obviously has a right to celebrate his birthday. And some would suggest in any way he sees fit. I would suggest one of the pitfalls of being one of the most recognisable, prominent and privileged footballers in the world, one of the very few pitfalls of that is, yeah, you, you can't go to China White after you lose a derby. Like, it's it's not the way it should be. It's not fair. But life isn't fair, and one of the very few pitfalls are, of course, celebrate your birthday, but maybe not in a celebrity hangout. Off the back of that, you've been dropped, and I know that we're hearing that it was. I know that we're hearing that it was an injury, but we can employ some critical thinking here, can't we, Harry? Like two and two make is a Christmas cake a lot of the time. He's he's gone out to celebrate his birthday off the back of off the back of a derby defeat, and then he's injured. I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't necessarily add up to me. So Mark Goldbridge, on his Manchester United platform, having a conversation around the future of Marcus Rashford, I don't really understand what he's done wrong. Do, do you agree with me here, or am I missing the point? Yeah, I think when you're that famous, when you're in that position that Marcus Rashford is mm. in, people are going to talk about you. Yeah. That's how it goes. And I think if you take, as, as you put it, if you take umbrage with every single content creator, journalist that passes comment on your performances yeah. or your future, you're going to drive yourself crazy. Absolutely. Do, do, you know, do you know the other thing I would add to this as well? Mark Goldbridge, because of his because of his success, he doesn't need to care about upsetting anyone, in fact. He can therefore say what he genuinely believes. You know other journalists who perhaps rely on the Manchester United press communications officer being favourable to them? Another journalist may re may actually re rely on Mark Rashford himself having a relationship with Rashford. They won't be able to ask these questions. So that actually makes, if you by extension to that point, it makes Mark Goldbridge and his channel one of the most authentic because he isn't relying on any kind of back scratching from Rashford, from people within the camp, from Manchester United. 
he can say what he genuinely believes and what he believes to be true. And I believe that Mark has done that. Other journalists, some people would go, well, why aren't other people... Mark's obviously just being sensationalist. Nobody else is asking the question. Maybe that's... Maybe that's a, a positive for Mark. Yeah, I don't doesn't disagree need to with play you. the game. I don't disagree with you. It's a fascinating debate. Uh, really, really interesting story. It's always fascinating to me when we get that crossover between fan media and players actually responding to it. I think mm. it's uh, incredible stuff.